Welcome back to Down on the Frame. Today, I got Jonah again, and we're gonna be doing, I think, a pretty straightforward installation of wiring in a crawl space. If you're doing any basement work, whether it's finished, unfinished, crawl space, not crawl space, basements need to have their receptacles GFCI protected. Now that we got the code stuff out of the way, we're gonna be extending a 20 amp circuit down there. That way we can add in a light switch, because there's no light switch down there. You have to go down and use a little pole chain and twist the light bulb in. Not the best approach here. And in future videos, we're gonna be doing some more work down there, such as plumbing, space conditioning and all that. So stay tuned for those videos. But we're gonna be installing these. I've decided to go with this setup because A, it's cheap, and B, uh, if we were to ever go down there and want to finish it in some fashion, we would just be able to drywall right over these. I bought these halo brackets. These are four inch halo brackets. Whole box of them, box of six. I think it was about $35 for all these. And then I think around, uh, I forget what these ones are. I bought these on Amazon. These were like probably 60 to $100 and um, I got six of these. So they're not the Halo ones because the Halo ones are substantially more expensive. These are like maybe 10 bucks each. The Halo ones are about 25 each. So I wasn't gonna go with this. They're um, adjustable as far as the Calvin rating. So you can do uh, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000, and they're about 900 or 750 lumens per bulb or per puck, which is not bad. This should provide enough lighting down there, uh, hopefully. If not, we can always add more because we're gonna wire it in a way that we do that. We're gonna be using proper non-metallic clamp connectors. We're gonna be able to add those in, but you are allowed to, if the manufacturer states it, to put two wires through one connector. And we will be doing that today. And then obviously your simple non-metallic Romex or simple Romex, it's just 12 2 100 feet of it, I don't know if we're gonna need that much, but you can always use some 12 2 You ready to mask up and go down there? Down in the frame. This basement isn't really wired that well. <laughs> we're gonna leave all the circuits on right now because we're not cutting into them. But when it comes time to do that, we'll kill power, make it safe, tie everything together, and there should be no service interruptions for anything more than like 10 minutes. Now, to lay out these lights, we're planning on trying to get as much coverage as we can while also planning for any future lighting. So what we might do is there's kind of, kind of three bays in the current basement. So I'm thinking about doing three lights here and then probably three lights, not in the middle bay, but the next bay over. And that should cover our utility area where our plumbing comes in, which we'll be spending a lot of time over there soon, as well as the entrance down when we come down here because there's no light over there right now. Typically when I'm cutting in lights, it's usually like 24 inches off the wall, um, but I might just do them dead center of this bay in dead center of that bay. Let's get a measurement here. So from the block wall to, I'm gonna consider this post, the middle of the bay, 72 inches. And we wanna try to avoid putting them in areas where like, like right here, looks like there's a wire that goes through probably feeding a circuit. It's gonna be dead center of light one here. Now we gotta do that five more times. <laughs> it's the first time using these little brackets, so. So yeah, now you can slide those, and I think they have little set screws on them. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll come back and center that. All right, so I'm gonna mount the boxes in a way that lines us up for success for wiring them. Okay, so if that's the case, we might put the boxes up first so I have more access to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's magnetic. Yeah. What did I say? Electricians have cool tools, dude. <laughs> so, probably. So it's my naiveness, but I, I gotta ask. Hmm. Why wouldn't you want to run the lines first? You could. You could? You could. Is it advised to do it this way? Just to like set them where you want them and then run the line or? Uh, I'm doing this because I'm not working off of a print. Okay, if yeah, I, if this I, is kind of free hit. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, like I want to be able to do, just see how things are going together. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, in a job site, you'd run the wire, let it just hang, right? You just let it hang here and then mount all this stuff, put the wire in. I just want to get one in to see like 
how it all plays out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll do that. We'll do that for the rest of them. We'll whip it out and then hang them. We'll see how the whole thing goes together. Now, like I said, there's a little set screw, so I'm actually gonna have to take this out and set it, but that's what's generally gonna look like. There's a set screw on that, and you just gotta tighten that so they don't move around. And I think this is gonna look pretty good, dude. We can, uh... Good, now it's not gonna move. So that's what the general assembly is gonna look like, but yeah, putting this definitely, you know, kind of obstructs this. So we're gonna do the rest of them like you would on a normal construction site, which John has just brought up. We're gonna whip them all out, bring the wires to them, hang whips down. We'll get the boxes mounted, wired. Then we'll put these up and pop these in. But yeah, I think this, uh, this is gonna be pretty good. I wanna poke down through here to see where it's gonna come down. And then I think that's gonna set where we drill our holes. Uh-huh. Yeah, because you're all on them all uniform. Oh, yeah, I like the, I like uniform. That's my, how my dad is. He wants everything organized. Yep. That's electricians, man. Yep. There you are. Huh? There you are. Yeah. Perfect. So we'll bring a whip over to here. We'll come down, we'll go out that way. You can see all the particles flying in the air. We're gonna try to keep all of our holes kind of in line. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no! Cotton candy, anybody? It's a forbidden cotton candy. It's a forbidden. Make sure you check on either side of the stud. Keep this wire out of the way, it's already been damaged by me. <laughs> Recap the stove install. <laughs> uh, bad time. Good time, but mistakes were bad time. <laughs> you know what I want my future house to have? Hmm. A whole house uh, air purifier. Yes. That's like a dream to have. Just like a, instead of these stupid little unit things all over my house, I just want a whole house air purifier. Yep. Same. Ooh. What have we discovered here? Oh. Lots of moisture. That is some moisture indeed. But that's why we'll get the dehumidifier going down here. Mm -hmm. I should get auger bits. I got. I'm using spade bits, and they're not bad, but auger bits might be a better bet. They probably do a cleaner cut than that too. That yeah. looks a little haggard. Yeah, because it gets stuck at the end. Yeah. Because this, the the part that pulls the bit through, it pokes out, and then it, there's nothing moving it. So it's better to have an auger bit that's fully threaded and will pull itself through. Let me put my OSHA brew safety glasses on. <laughs> Maybe we should switch sides. This, it throws it this way. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I had a, my foot was stuck. It's the demons in the floor. Mm -hmm. I mean, see, this is why you look. <laughs> oh, dude, I almost hit that, dude. Or I did. <sighs> uh oh, dude, look uh -uh. at that. I almost just drilled right into that. We almost just f***ing had a real sparks flying. That is the main to my house. Yeah. That stays under in this basement. Delete that footage. <laughs> <laughs> and I even said that too. I was like, I have to watch out for that. Just so once you get rolling with the drill, you're like, it's fine. Yeah, I know. You just want to get it done because it's the sh that's like, all right, yeah, yeah. Drill hole, drill hole. This is a mundane sh Yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. Luckily, I have the benefit of ripping this down and not caring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we had to put this back up, that would suck. I'd say this is insulation that has to get replaced anyway. Mm-hmm. Luckily, we're not going to have to use that many staples because we're... Going through holes. Going through holes, baby. Where is my drill? It's over here. And she will be left. <laughs> and we will hit the feeder. 
<laughs> oh wait, this is a structural beam. Oh, poopy. I mean, this big of a hole probably isn't gonna make a difference. A thousand likes and he'll do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Okay, guess we'll do that over here too. Is that all? I think that's all the holes, Jenna. We're gonna do all the long poles first. You start with the longest poles first, because you always end up with shorter runs of wire at the end. So, that's our two long ones. All the way through here. So the way that we're bringing these wires to the boxes is oriented in a way that is only going to have a wire coming in and a wire coming out. These lights really are only designed for ideally a 15 gauge wire. The connectors they have in them will hold up to 12, it's fine, but it's just, it's a really tight space once you get up to 12 and higher. I wouldn't even wire them with 10 gauge. I'm just laying out how this is gonna work. And essentially what's gonna happen is either we come into this box and daisy chain all the lights. However, I might not wire it that way if this was in like a living space, because if you put a dimmer on it, you'll notice if they're not at full blast, this light will come on then that, and it'll go down the chain. So you kind of want to split it up to balance how the power gets delivered to each light instead of going through every single light. Uh, I haven't tested if that makes that much of a difference, but I believe it does. In that case, we're gonna try to hit this with our main and we'll daisy chain it. So we're going down that light, that light, that light, that light. So we have one more run to do from that light down there over to this corner, and then we'll have all of our wire uh, ran for the lights. One wire pulled too short and the whole world goes crazy. <laughs> Society. <laughs> so we're gonna do 48 inches to the bottom of our light switch box. Right there, we're going to put it in this stud cavity. Now I'm going to need you back downstairs because I'm going to feed you some wires. We have to run two wires from here. One down for the lights and one down for the receptacle. So that's for the light. We'll call that one the light one. The receptacle, I'd like to have it like right here. Yeah, we'll probably pull it through that same hole, come to this point and drop it down like, drop it down like two feet. We'll have that pretty low. All right. Come on, go through the hole. Come on. Tight. She's a little tight. I have this much so far. That, you think that'll be good? Yeah, it should be good. That's it. That's 100 feet of wire right there. I'm gonna mount some boxes. Doing a different approach for mounting these. We're gonna do the boxes horizontally. Just feel like it's a little bit better and then, uh, than having them the way we had them. Level. The level, Gronk. Pull the level. Boom. That's the center of our light. On, on to the next one. You know what we should do though for make our lives a little bit easier? If we know we're coming in that one, let's just break that oh, out right now. Break it out. Put the cut connected in there. Stick a flathead in. They sell plastic bushings for these too. Um, not the biggest fan. In fact, they might even be in this box, but uh, I like the the metal clamp connectors, they're gonna hold the wire a lot better. And if you ever wanna remove them, they're much easier. Important thing to keep in mind when doing this is you need to secure your lines within a foot of the box. So as you can see, nine inches, 
down the foot of the box. I'm gonna push this through our connector. Really only need about that much in there. Yeah. Trim it up a little bit so we're not pushing a ton of conductor through. Then I'm gonna try to trim it before I put it in, just so that I don't have to, I can get a little bit closer to the connector. So on my little Klein cutters here, it has 12-2 Romex slot right there. Oddly enough, as a industrial electrician, you don't spend a whole lot of time with Romex. It's usually MC. I'm gonna leave that little bulge there. I can pull it back through the staple probably. Make sure it's nice and tight. You can also leave a little bit of a whip there if you wanted to, if you plan on moving it. So now we have the conductors in, just rip the sheeting off the ground wire there. And we're gonna try to keep this as neat as possible. So we're gonna tuck it down in there. And these are really easy. In fact, some people might recommend replacing the uh, these connectors with maybe like a Wago type connector, which is a little bit more secure. You don't need to strip it a whole lot. Some of these might have strip gauges on them, but you want all the copper to be up at the top and just a little bit of insulation in there. Obviously you're not putting black and white, but so push this in here. As you can see, conductor is going to go in and there's insulation in, but the conductor itself is all the way through hitting the back. Wow, these cut way better than my Milwaukee ones. Okay, that's in all the way at the back. That's our hot, that's our neutral. Kind of group them together a little bit. And our ground is already stripped. Then I just try to try to group them together, sit them as flat as I can into the box. But as you can see, that's just one wire. I left a decent amount of slack in there, but the, the cover should close and not be pushed out. And that's just one 12-2. So tw two 12-2s is gonna be a lot in here. And we're gonna do that with the rest of them. And we're gonna put the camera on the tripod and try to get some work done. All right guys, so all of the lights are installed with their respective boxes. We set them all to 4K. That one's up there, one over there. They're all installed. Now we're just going to install a receptacle here. And honestly, we're probably just gonna screw it to the bottom of like right here. Yeah, we'll put that there and then that'll be the last of what we have to do. Then we're gonna hop upstairs Bring those two wires into our two gang box. We'll shut down the power in that room. Do our jumper in, tie that all together, uh, and also wire the light switches, and we should have power. So, <laughs> so much light in there. Another thing to stay in this basement. <laughs> Ew, that's in there. We'll do one more for good measure, but that is not going Gee, nowhere. Going nowhere, brother. I just, I don't know. I was like, I didn't want to cut any slack off. Alright, John, only one. I'm gonna do this part and then the rest is you. Let's do the pigtail. pigtail thing. And you see how the screw is gonna go in like that? Yeah. So that's how you want your pigtail to go. Get it up on in there like so. There's your pigtail. There's your hots. Your hots and your neutral. Yeah, so we need to just hold them together and then just fucking twist them together. Yeah. And then there's a little do it like case twist on. Well, so yes and no. You want them to twist together a little bit, right? So that's a good twist. But then you want to come back in with your linesman's at the top. 
And the reason for that is that it's going to give you a nice flat edge and there's threads in there. And that, that little edge in there will uh, catch. I'll twist on real nice. It's good enough for government work, eh? <laughs> it's good enough for government work. Need a little machine screw to screw right now. Look at that, John. That's uh this is a GFCI weather rated outlet with another receptacle on it too, which is loaded out of that GFCI. So now time to go upstairs, start tying things in. Alright, so we gotta come into this thing. Plenty. Oh these look a little loop for each one of these. Bit of a dingus, should have labeled which one was which. All right, we need the, the switches right on the counter. All right, so I'm pulling this through to go in here. As you can see, this whole time, we have not come in contact with any live electrical. We haven't shut any circuit off. We've been able to do our work without interrupting power or putting ourselves in danger. That's the ideal way to do things, in my opinion. So this is our power in, and these are our two switches. All of our hots are gonna bend up. All of our grounds are getting spliced together. Do those first. Middle power. No middles lights. So this is what we have to do. We have to have a ground going to each, and what we'll do is we'll daisy chain those together with this ground. So that's our ground. All of our neutrals can be tied together because neutrals do not go to switches, right? Only power goes to switches. On a switch, two hots and a ground. So this is why my dad has such bad arthritis. <laughs> yes. The only pigtails we're doing are from here. These are our lot. These are our loads. So we're not pigtailing this, but we have to make two pigtails come out of that. So these are going to be going to our, the tops of our switches, and then I'm going to make pigtails come out to the bottom of our switches. And if you're from Europe looking at me like, silly American, you're right, I probably could have just used a Wago and been done with that butt. This is our light switch, it's a 20 amp rated light switch. These are also commercial rated, so instead of having to wrap it around the screw, you can just slide this in the back like that and tighten the clamp down onto it. Another thing we could have done had I had realized that it was these types, I totally forgot, is we could also take a jumper instead of making the splice here and jump out to the other other switch so you can have two come out of here see yeah, the spot for two on the other side but that's okay this is the light switch to our power power and because this box is so packed i'm going to wrap both of these in electrical tape electrical tape gets its strength from tension so just make sure you really pull on this sucker when you're putting it on I think I need to break these ears too. Oh no! Oh no! That is unfortunate, folks. I don't know why that happened. What that means is that I have to rewire this whole box at some point. I've never snapped. That one's probably gonna do it too. I've never snapped the head of a bolt like that. All right, switch plate. Jonah, this ain't going well, bud. All right, guys. It's time to shut off power in here. That's it, okay. I just can't wait to watch you flip that switch and everything just comes to life down there. Here I used Wagos. Because, you know, I didn't want to struggle with my life, I guess. I knew I was going to be adding things in here, so I was like, way goes it is. Past Zach is probably thinking. 
present Zach is thinking past Zach for sure. Pull the lava gronk. Alrighty. Three, two, one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. wow. Oh my lordy. There it is. The ambiance down here. Look at that ambiance. Got a green light. Yeah. She's good, so that's probably powered up too. I like it. But that gets us down here now without having to run down here in the dark. There's a light switch there. We got a receptacle here so we can plug in things. If it's a ceiling mount like this, a twist lock is usually better, but that's all right for what we're doing. All right, guys, that was a fun little project. Uh, you know, ran into some hiccups, had some close calls, but Joan and I made it through. Uh, and so far the lighting down here, as well as the receptacles have been huge. I'll show you guys right now, actually. I have a dehumidifier plugged in over here, uh, as well as some heat trace, which is over there on the pipes. Uh, and when we had some water freeze in our pipes, we were able to bring a space heater down here and plug it in to that. Yeah, it's working out really well. So that is one of our phases that I did want to get done before we start some other projects down here. So those other projects are going to be uh, some plumbing stuff and maybe some insulation stuff. But now that we have power down here, lights and everything, it makes it a lot easier to come down here and work. If you guys have any ideas for new projects uh, or you have any questions about what happened in the video, leave them down below in the comments section. And we'll see you guys next time on Down in the Frame.